Good morning, everyone. Today we are doing 3.1, where we'll be going over square roots, cube roots, and graphing these. First thing we're going to do is talk about square roots, and we're just going to talk about the basics right up front. And to square a number means to raise it um, to the second power. So if I have 4 squared, 4 right here is my base. And the little two up here is my exponent. The exponent tells me how many times I need to use the four as a factor, okay? So if I were to rewrite this in expanded form, it would look like four times four. See, I used my base twice. So four times four is 16. So this is a perfect square, and we need to know our perfect squares. Um, I highly recommend that you know them up to 13. That way, if you see these, um, you'll either one of them, okay? So I squared positive 5 to get um, 25, or I can square the negative 5 to get 25. Okay, what is the square root of negative 36? Okay, so let's take a look at this. What number did I square to get negative 36? Okay, move it over. X squared plus 36 equals zero. Well, remember when we were doing um, these problems and we we're trying to factor that if we had the sum of squares, we could not factor it. That was prime, right? PR prime. Well, we can't do this problem, okay? I've had students go, well, it's six. Well, six times six equals 36. So now negative six. Okay, so negative six times negative six, well, that'll give me a 36. And I'm looking for that negative 36. And then they'll say, okay, how about six and negative six? But the thing is, these guys have to be the same, okay? Because it's one of its two equal factors. These guys have to be equal. So we can't even think about using that one. So in this case, it does not exist. We cannot come up with it. Think about it. If you square a positive number, you'll always come up with a positive. If you square a negative number, two negatives, give me a positive. So there is no way I can come up with that negative right there. Okay, and what is the square root of zero? Well, if I say zero times zero equals zero, so square root of zero is zero. Now we need to do a little bit of notation. This is the radical sign, and it is used to designate the non-negative square root. Well, what's non-negative? That's a positive, right? So we can think of that as the positive square root. And this um, is the principal square root. So when I use this sign, my answer is always going to be just the positive um, part, okay? So if I write it out like this over here, it can be the plus or minus. But if I use this notation, it is only the positive part of it, okay? The number under the radical is the radicand, and... Um, the index is the little number there. Now, if there is nothing there, it's an implied two, all right? If um, there is another number there, which it can be, it is um, called the index, and it is a um, positive integer greater than one. So positive integer greater than one. So you're gonna have, you could write a two, it's an implied two if you wanna write the two up there, it's not hurting a thing. A three, a four, a five, something like that, okay? 
All right, so let's take a look at this. What is the square root of four? All right, so square root of four. If I broke that down into primes, that would be two times two. Square root of two times two. And that would give me the square root of two squared. And when I'm taking a square root of something that I squared, that gives me just the two, okay? Because remember, back over, um, back here, it said one of its two equal factors. So how I like to look at this at time is, you know, when I break it down into primes, I got two of these guys. The index tells me how many of them I have to have to bring it out. Okay, if I got two of them, um, I can bring it out. Now, I also want to point out here that squaring and square roots are opposite operations, and they undo each other. So anytime I'm taking a square root of something that has been squared, they're opposite operations, and they undo each other, and I'll be left with that right there. Okay, now, I, it's okay to have the negative out here. It just cannot be underneath over here. Okay, so this would give me the opposite of the square root of four. Well, the square root of four is two, and the opposite would be here. So if they wanted you to come up with a negative answer or the negative part of the square root, you just put it up front, up there. We can do square roots with fractions, okay? We don't know this rule yet, but it's coming up. So we got the square root of 16 over square root of 25. I can just rewrite it like this using the quotient rule, okay? Then the square root of 16, well, that would give me a four. Let me show you this piece of paper. You can find this over in the file section. And if I wanted the square root of four, I go to my squares, your squares, cubes, fourth root, fifth root. Go to your squares, find four, then go over. And it says two, okay? So, oh, we're not looking with four, we're using 16. So let's go find 16 and go over. It's a four, it's a four. Now we have used our square root sign. Do not keep going on that. Square root of 16 is four, we're done. Okay, let me actually do that the long way. So four times four like that. And down here would be five times five. Okay, I got two fours, they come out from underneath. You are done, you used it, one and done. Okay, some people just don't know where to stop on this. They'll go, well, four's on my list over here. I can keep going. No, you can't. You already used it. Okay, then I have those two fives. They can come out, and that'll give me a four-fifths. We can use them on decimals, and in this case, um, it's going to be 0.08. Okay, and um, we can use them on something like this as well. If I were to um, stick that in a calculator, notice 88 is not on my list here. Okay, 88 falls in between here. So this um, square root is gonna fall in between nine and 10. So it'll be nine point something, all right? Um, I need to stick that in my calculator and when I do that, I am going to get approximately, that's when you use the little squiggly equal sign, that tells people that you have rounded. And in this class, unless we state otherwise, we're gonna round to the hundredths point, okay? So 9.38, then I have that negative sign up there. So this is approximately negative 9.38, okay? So sometimes your instructions will say approximate, and that's what you would do. Sometimes your instructions might say um, simplify, and that's a different process, okay, that we're gonna learn in a day or two. So approximate, you can just stick it in your calculator and figure out what that is. Okay, 
let's take a look at cube roots now. All right, we're going to come back over here and we are going to do some perfect cubes. Add those to our list here. So perfect cubes. If I cube zero, I'm going to have zero. If I cube one, I will have one. If I cube um, two, I'll have an eight. If I cube three, I'll have a 27. I cube four, I'll have a 64. I cube five, I will have a 125. You should know all of those um, because they show up all the time, okay? And um, let's just take a quick look at one of those. So if I had something like um, two cubed, right? To cube a number means to raise it to the third power. So in expanded form, that would look like two times two times two, which gives me an eight, right? Put those together, that gives me a four times that two gives me an eight. Well, what if I had negative two cubed? Well, that would give me a negative two times negative two times negative two in expanded form. Put those two together, that'll give me a four. Four times the negative two gives me a negative eight. Okay, so um, again, we can take cube roots of numbers, all right? And a cube root of a number is one of its three equal factors. So what is the cube root of eight? Well, if I broke this down into primes, eight would be two times two times two. And notice I have a little three that's telling me I'm looking for a cube root. So now I need three of something to be able to come out. I could also look at this as the cube root of two cubed, like that. And just like squares, these guys are opposite operations. They all cancel each other out. When you're taking a cube of something that is cubed, they cancel each other out and you'd just be left with two. And the way I like to look at it at times is if I got three of those, this one tells me how many I need and it will come out. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. Cube root of negative eight. All right, so that would be the cube root. Let's rewrite this. This would be negative two times negative two times negative two, okay? So that is the same thing as looking at it as negative two cubed like that. Again, those guys would cancel each other out and I'd be left with a negative two. Or you could look at it as like a one, two, three of those. That tells me I need three so it could come out, so negative two. Okay, what is the cube root of 27? Well, if I come over here, so I'm looking at my cubes, that tells me what I'm looking for. I go down my list until I get to 27. Oh, there it is. Go over to the side, it's three. Okay, so the cube root of 27 is three. How about the cube root of negative 64? You're like, wait, back in, well, just a little bit ago, you told me that we couldn't have a square root of a negative number. You can't, but I can do a cube root of a negative number because look it up here, it actually works. Okay, so this one here, if I had the cube root of 64, that will give me a four. Now be careful here because 64 is on the cube list and it's on the square list, okay? But we're looking for the cube, so we're going here. So that's gonna give me a negative four. And the cube root of zero is zero. Okay, so I wanna go over, you know, this type of thing right here just real quick. So if I had like a square root of negative four, that does not exist because we can't get that negative in there, but a cube root or, well, actually for this over here, it's any even powered index. Any even index, you cannot have a negative underneath the radical. 
Now, an odd index, you can have a um, negative under the radical. So keep that in mind. So, if, okay. Now we are going to do a little bit of graphing. Take that. All right, now we are going to do some graphing. We did this in 2C, so if you need to know more about translations, go check that out. Um, first thing we're going to look at is f of x equals the square root of x. So if I put a negative 4 in there, I'll get a square root of negative 4. Can't have a negative under a radical where index is even, so this is, does not exist. Negative 1 would be the same thing. 0, square root of 0, 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. So let's go plot those points. Negative 4 does not exist. Well, on my t Cartesian um, coordinate plane here, I don't have a place called does not exist. So we cannot graph this or this. I can do 0, 0. 1, 1, and 4, 2. We get something that looks like this. We were calling that the shooting star the other day. Let's take a look at the domain and range of this. Now, my domain are my x values. Notice we had some problems on x values. And as I um, scan from left to right, it doesn't start until zero and zero is included because it is over here on my um, xy table and it goes off until infinity okay doing our range range is y come up this way it doesn't start until zero and that is included and um, keeps going off this way so all the way until infinity infinities always have the parentheses now we're going to take some look at translations. Works just the way it did the other day on those quadratic functions. Um, our A is up front here. If it is positive, it opens this way. If it is negative, it will open this way here. Um, this tells me left and right which way it's going to shift. And remember, it's the opposite of what you want it to do because of that negative sign there. And this K back here is up or down, okay? Um, and that way, this one does go the way you want it to. So let's take a look at F of X equals square root of X plus 3. It is underneath the radical, so it's going to go left or right. In this case, the opposite, so towards the negative, so 1, 2, 3. It just takes every point on this graph and shifts it over three. So in this case, we're going to start here, and it's going to go that way. Okay. Let's take a look at the domain and range on that. So my domain here, it actually starts at negative three, and that's going to be included and goes on to infinity. And then I have my range going up this way. It's going to start at zero and go on to infinity. All right, notice that our domain um, changed a little on this one here. Our range is exactly the same. Okay, so this one here, it is underneath the radical right here. So the negative two is going to go the opposite way that you want to. So it's actually going one, two. It's going to start right here and go off over that way. Now our domain on this one here will be from two to infinity. It'll look just like this, except for there'll be a two right there. So when um, there's stuff going on underneath the radical, that changed our domain and not our range. Now let's take a look at this one here. And the plus two is outside of the radical. So that one means up and down, and it is going in the direction that you want it to. So it's going to shift everything up two points. So one, two, and it'll go off this way. 
Let's take a look at our domain and range on that. Domain, okay, left to right. Doesn't start until zero. It's included and it's going off to infinity. Range, I come up this way, it's not starting until two. It's included and it is going off to infinity because of that arrow. All right, so notice on this one here, our range has changed a bit, okay? Um, our domain is the same. Now this one here, it's behind, it's like this over here, so it's going down three, one, two, three, it's gonna start here and off this way. Everything was moved down three points, okay? And our domain's gonna be the same as that one there, and our range, instead of having the positive two there, will have the negative three. Okay, let's take a look at cube roots now. So I picked some convenient cubes over here. Let's put in a negative eight there. So that would be the cube root of negative eight. And we've done that in our work previously and found out it's negative two. I put in negative one, it'll be negative one, zero, one, and two. All right, let's go graph these. I'm gonna plot these points. Negative eight, negative two, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, and eight, two. So this comes in and goes like this, okay? Let's find our domain and range on this domain. I got arrows on both sides, so negative infinity to infinity, I always have the parentheses on those. Range, I have arrows on both sides, that means it's going on and on forever. So I, again, will have negative infinity to positive infinity. Notice there are no problems when I have a cube or any odd index, okay? When I have an even index, like over here, I'm going to have a domain issue when I have negative numbers underneath the radical. Okay, translations work just the way um, they always do. Okay, my A, if it's positive, it's going to look like that. So it'll come like that. If my A is negative, it is going to be the opposite. It will go like that. Okay, it reflects across that x-axis. So um, keep an eye out for that. This H here, that is the left and right, opposite of what you want it to do. The K back here is up and down. Okay, so here's what my standard would look like. Add that plus three right here. Remember, it's the opposite of what you want it to do, and it's going left and right. So plus three is gonna go in the negative direction. One, two, three. So this point has moved here, and I will get something like that. It's not a very good graph, but you get the idea. Okay, and our domain, again, it's going to be all um, real numbers are going to work there. And our range would be all real numbers for all of these. Okay, so this one here with the minus 2, it's underneath the radical, moving the opposite way that you want to. So it is going to go in the positive direction and I will get something that looks like this. Okay, this plus two back here, that's the one that makes it go up and down. So this point is gonna move up two. Every point on this is gonna just move up two. And I will get something like that. And this one here, I have the negative three behind it. One, two, three, so it makes it go down three and everything will shift three places down. All right, that is it for 3.1. Have a great day and good luck on the homework. Bye.